I have learned a couple of things about success. And I guess it's about prosperity, success, whatever you want to call success, whatever you, I have learned something about that. And I think that uh, God has prepared me for that moment, you know, to, to understand it and to share some of the principles with people. Because what I, what I learned, you know, from going to church a, a good part of my life is, is that there are a lot of people who know a lot of scriptures. They, they memorization of it is outstanding. And I can't tell you how I wish I had that. But if you don't have application of what you memorize, you can't really get what all God got for you. Now, feel how you feel about me. I have acquired some things in life because I knew some scriptures. And I just applied the ones I knew. My mama was a Sunday school teacher, so what she told me, I just applied to my life. So what, what all, all my message is, is about some, some principles. Here, here's, here's something I learned from a guy. Uh, the two most important days of your life, the two most important days of your life is the day you were born and the day you discover why. Man, that's a cool, that's a cool moment, man. You understand? Do you know how valuable it is to be given the gift of life? But then the incredible gift when you figure out why. Because how many people you know can't get it figured out? If you are sitting there thinking it's got to be more to life than this, it's because it probably is. It's probably because God is whispering in your ear saying it's more to life than this. You ain't got to be tripping about it. It's just really more to life than this. But you got to figure out the why part. What helped me get to the why part? See, was the... you. The why part came to me when I discovered something that he gave to all of us. See, God gives everybody a gift. He never creates a soul without giving them a gift. You all are gifted. You don't have to be comedy. It don't have to be music, but you're gifted. You've all been given something. Some of you all, your friends come to you when, with their problems. That's a gift. Some of you know how to network. That's a gift. Some of you all connect the dots at your church. Some of you all have organizational skills. Some of you all are better bakers than the other ones. Some of y'all are great florists. Some of you have argumentative skills, should go be a lawyer, something like that. Everybody got a gift. Some, some people is bald, some people is that. Everybody got one. I don't care if you see a blind person, they can do something. You see a person with a handicap, they can do something. You can do something. Problem is, though, you got to attach yourself to the gift. Now, how do you find out what that is? The day that you can get real with yourself and say, hey, look here, what is my gift? This is how you discover that. It is the thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. That's your gift. You ain't got the trip. You ain't got to ask nobody what you think it is. You can have this conversation with you. It is the thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. Them people over there that sing, they don't struggle to sing. It just come out. Michael Jordan don't struggle to play ball. He just play it. You understand? When you have a gift, it's what you do. You talk, that could be your gift. You write, that's your gift. You're a great listener, problem solver. You got the gift of matching up, that's all a gift. Hear what messes people up though. You see something that somebody else does and then you wanna go do that. So now you're not concerned with your gift. Now you want to pursue a passion. You got a lot of problems happening in your life if you start chasing passion. So I'm in a passion chasing business. I used to go to restaurants in LA and every time I sit there, here comes some little fine girl. Every time I sit down, Mr. Harvey, can you look at my head shot and everything? I say, for what, what you do? I'm an actress. I say, so, so what you acting in? I'm, 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 not, I'm not in anything yet, I'm just, but I wanna be. I said, no, what are you acting in? See, if you're an actress, then you act. Yes, yes. You a waitress. <laughs> Actors have acting gigs. Piano players play piano. Singers sing. See, you ain't got to figure it out. If you ain't doing it, it's because you ain't it. 
This say, but if you are going to pursue a path, I was passionate one time in my life about playing ball. I wanted to play in the NBA. Well, here's the problem. When I ran full speed with the basketball, I ain't have it no more. <laughs> so now this, this passion about playing in the league, that's out the question now. I had to find out what my gift was. And when I really ran, ran back over my life, I was funny. I could take comedy and transpose it instantly. I could, I wasn't afraid to come in front of people. That was my gift. When you start to pursue your gift, that leads you to what you should be about. <laughs> then the gift opened the way. I got this lifestyle I got now because my gift opened the way, not my passion. I ain't made a dollar playing basketball. I'm passionate about golf. I shoot a 90 every time I play. You can't make a dollar playing golf. But my gift, though, has made a way. Why won't you find out from God why you were born by getting your gift and pursuing it? Stop chasing the passion. And come on, man, pursue the gift. You people been tripping yourself out for years ch chasing something that ain't yours. I want to lead the choir. You ain't the choir leader. <laughs> now, once you discover what your gift is and you go to God to help you prepare to make room for this gift, you got, you got to make preparation. See, now here's the other principle. You got to make preparation. You got to get ready. When I, when I first got uh, out of college, I got a little job. I used to go to my mama's house all the time. I say, mama, mama, I just well, it wasn't, I didn't have to go far. Just come on downstairs. <laughs> now I say, mama, I'm, um, check this out, mama, I'm gonna give myself a new car. My mama say, that's good, baby, but what you gonna do with your old car? Cause your old car out there up on, up on the blocks. I ain't paying no attention to it. A couple weeks later, I come back to her again. I said, mama, I'm gonna give me a car. She said, I know, baby, but what you gonna do about your old car? I was standing there and I figured it out. I said, wow. What my mama was saying to me was that if you're gonna claim something, if you're gonna ask God for something, you got to make ready for it. So. What I did was, I said, I'm, I called my partner up, called the tow truck, had him come pick up the uh, car, take it out. Then I started sweeping the garage, getting it all ready, got some asphalt cleaning. I cleaned up the garage because I was just getting ready yeah, yeah. to receive what I'd asked him for. And when I got that car and got that garage all ready to receive, it wasn't 30 days later, it wasn't a new car, but it was a new used car. But I had got it because then I had made ready to receive. If you don't do that, it's not an act of faith. All I'm doing is sharing with you principles of success, what I did to get over. Now, when you do that, you gotta expect the haters to come because that's here they come now. See, you can't make a decision to do right, to do better, to want more, to get more, and don't have haters. You got them on your job now. Go get a promotion. Here come the haters. Go down there and put in for uh, extra overtime. Here come the haters. Because you're just trying to better your position. Do anything. Go change your hair. Here they come. Here they come. But when haters come, haters come, they are a good thing too, they validate you. Yeah. Haters now prove that you're doing something. You are now validated. If you have no haters, it's cause you ain't doing nothing. That's what, I, that's what I learned. If you ain't trying to change and be better, it ain't nothing for them to talk about. Cause if you're gonna stay the same, then they cool with you cause you right there with them. Haters validate you, and they're going to come at an angle you ain't ready for. This is the other one I learned, because Bishop Jakes taught me this one. Now, when you're going through something, Steve, and tell the people this on the radio, 
In order to go to the next level, to the next dimension, you have to break through the glass ceiling. But in breaking through a glass ceiling, there's going to be some bloodshed. <laughs> this, this is the part I really did not like. It was the bloodshed part. And the blood that you're shedding is usually something from your past. Yeah. Yeah. Because in order to move on, move up, you always gotta get rid of, you always gotta get rid of something from your past. The blood you shed is something from your past, because everybody got something in their past they don't want out. Yeah. Well, once it get out, it's out. They can't tell it on you but one time. That's the fire part. That's, that's, that's when you feel, feel like you're on fire when they're telling it. And you just bleed and you don't know what's it. You, you got so many holes on you, you can't stop it. But you ain't catching on fire, though. You ain't, he ain't gonna put more on you than you can bear. You ain't gonna die. You gonna be fine. But guess what? If you stay still, let me do it for you. Fight your battles. Remember that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. If you can hold that, let me do it for you. When I crash you through this ceiling, you ain't gonna believe you, man. Bishop told me one time, he said, oh, man. All right, Steve. He said, oh, it's like putting a bow and arrow on a bow. He said, you got to pull it back. He said, sometimes he pull you back so far, everything in you be shaking. Sometimes you got it back so far, man, you can't. Man, you, you just, man, please. I can't take it no more. Everything on you is trembling. He said, and you, you feel like you about to break. But he let you go, though. Everybody in your way got it clear. You got to look out. Because he's going to shoot you. You going to go places you ain't never thought you'd go. Fire you out there like that, man. The last thing I'm going to tell you is this hill. See, I now learned this from uh, Joel Osteen. That, that's my man. He be texting me. That's my man. This, God done put some people around me. Show me some stuff. He was telling this story. He said, uh, this man that went to heaven, he was walking with Peter uh, down this aisleway, and it had, was going down this corridor, had a lot of doors on it, and said all these doors had names on it. And he said, uh, Peter, let me ask you something. What's, what's, the, what's all these doors, these names on? He said, don't worry about it. Just go ahead. So he kept walking. He messed around. He saw one of them doors and had his name on it. He said, whoa. He said, hey, Peter, this here ain't got my name on it. <laughs> Something I need to know? He said, man, don't worry about that. You, you here now. Just go on in there and talk to him. See what he, he, he said, no, nah, I won't know what's in the door. He said, you sure you won't see what's in the door? He said, yeah. So he opened up the door. It was a warehouse. It had number shelves on it. And then the shelves had nothing but packages. And all the packages had his name on them. And he said, what is all these boxes? He said, that's all of the blessings, all of the things God wanted to ship to you. But number one, you didn't ask him for it. Then number two, you didn't believe you would have it. Then you, you doubted him. And then you, you felt like you wasn't worthy. And so now all these boxes is up here. Now the man standing there wishing he had never even been in the room. And I started thinking, I got some dudes that work for me. And I said, I want you to do this graph for me. And that's what I'm finna show you now. See, what you happen is when God sends your package, he only sends it to one street. That's Faith Street. You got to stay in faith. You can't move off of Faith Street. You can't get on Doubted Drive. You can't be over there and start doubting it because your package going to go right on by. You can't lose your faith 
and get on not meant to be way because your package is going to keep going right on by. Because the package just go to Faith Street. You can get your little feelings hurt. I ain't worthy. Guess what? Your package going to keep going right on by. You have not because you ask not. Then you sit up here and start feeling sorry for yourself. You go on pity way. Your package keep going right on by. If you stay right on Faith Street, don't ever come off because the blessing is coming. If you wait on it, here it comes. It may not come when you want it, but it on time. But if you get up and you move off of Faith Street, your box going to get sent back to Cinder. And now you're going to have a warehouse with a bunch of boxes with your name on it that you didn't never get. And I don't know about you, but I want everything he got for me. If he got something for me, I need all of mine. Because I don't know about you, but God lay you out, man. God will give you stuff. Man, he done took me places. I ain't never thought I was going to go. I done seen parts of the world I never even thought I could go to. He done gave me stuff. He done put people in my life. God will do it for you, man. But you just got to stay, man. Use these principles of success. Understand, God is just that way. He'll lay you out. Because if he can lay me out, see, if he fix me and change me and get me over here trying to do better, I ain't perfect. I'm just trying to do better. I still say some stuff I ain't supposed to say. You understand? I ain't, I ain't got it all together yet. I just got in the gate. I'm a new kind of Christian. But ain't no lock on my gate either. So if, if you see, once you, once you check me, I'm probably going to check you back. But I'm getting better at that. I don't know how to love my enemies yet. I'm getting better at it, though. But it's a process. And the more times we can make people understand that it's a process, the more people can come in. Oh, man. Thank you, brother.